Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs, and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you guys are having a good day. Today we are starting out over here at our Charged Creeper mob head farm, where I figured I would do a little bit of Charged Creeper exploding before we move on to the main topic of today's video because we are going to be going away from the main project areas we've been working on and we're going to start a new project area or rather return to one that we haven't been to for a while i am going to come back to the ski village and that's going to be our project for the majority of this month it's a winter thing it feels like december is the time we should really get into making this ski village project happen and I have some fun ideas for it. We can do some cool farms and stuff over there, but a lot of it is also going to focus on building because I don't get to do much building in this series, and I honestly really enjoy that aspect of the game. But before I do that, I did want to address a couple of comments that I got on this Charge Creeper farm, a couple of suggestions for ways that we could improve it, and I wanted to address one thing in particular, and that is the notion that we could use a flint and steel in a dispenser to activate a creeper, to basically light the creeper and set it exploding, instead of doing that manually and having to run away. A few people suggested this and unfortunately it's just not possible. I'm here in my creative test world, I have a couple of dispensers looking at these creepers with flint and steel in them and I have already tested it once with this one to make sure it doesn't work. But what we do is we end up lighting the creeper on fire instead of actually lighting it to explode because unfortunately the flint and steel behavior is actually one that is unique to the player using a flint and steel on the creeper even if i use a dispenser up here instead of the one down there it really doesn't work and ultimately it sets the block on fire there if i take out this dispenser here at the bottom and i try and light this creeper on fire see nothing even happens if we don't have a block to light on fire so the the only thing it's really able to do is light a block on fire, not light the creeper itself on fire. Whereas if we explode this thing manually, it creates a massive crater, you see? So <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, it isn't really possible to automate the lighting of those charged creepers. Otherwise, I would have done that. You do have to light them on fire manually and then get yourself out of harm's way quite quickly. And realistically, that isn't the hardest thing in the world to do. It just requires you to run around this obstruction that I built here. And we might remodel this platform. It is all very kind of temporary looking at the time. But yeah, it's really not that difficult to run away. And we still get ourselves plenty of mob heads in here. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time here collecting some more mob heads while we've still got some charged creepers down there in the tank and while they seem to be keen on squishing themselves into that corner where the minecart picks them up. There we go, one more in the chamber and I think we're going to spend a little bit more time grabbing some mob heads here before we make our way over to the ski resort. All right, folks, I have myself five creeper heads, four skeleton skulls, and four zombie heads. And with the last two charge creepers, I'm going to answer another frequently asked question from that last video. And that was, isn't it possible to get a charged creeper head as well? The answer to that, in vanilla at least, is no. And there are other data packs which you can add into the game which pull player heads from the player head database which are designed to look like the heads of various other mobs and so in packs like that it is possible to get yourself a charged creeper head but in vanilla if you blow up a charged creeper with a charged creeper all you get is a regular creeper head as you can see in the chest there so that is the last of our charged creepers and this farm obviously the contents of this farm are going to despawn except for all of the zombies which are holding items some of which yeah, have made their way into the skeleton area of the sorter, just didn't quite twig that there was a villager there quite in time. But we know we can come back here, farm ourselves a few more creepers, charge them in a thunderstorm and get mob heads anytime we want. And that is kind of the idea. It is also the idea that eventually we will link the Wither Skeleton farm up to this so we can have... 100% drop rate for Wither Skeleton Skulls as well, because Wither Skeletons will drop their heads much the same way skeletons do all the time when you have charged creepers involved. But that is not what we're here to do today. Today we are going to head out to the Ski Village and we're going to make a start on the project in that area. And I get to work with one of my favourite things and something that I feel like is a neglected resource in Minecraft, and that is snow. And to find out why snow is one of my favorite things, you guys will have to wait and see, but that does mean we're going to have to take out our Silk Touch shovel here and get 
the regular unbreaking and efficiency shovel in, we're going to basically pack up a bunch of shulker boxes and use them like suitcases because we are going to be traveling a little light. But what we are going to be bringing with us is a whole bunch of diorites. You heard me. <laughs> we're working with diorite today. And believe me, it's going to make this place look super cool. We're obviously going to have access to a whole bunch of spruce wood while we're over there, but carrying a little bit of it with me to begin with will allow me to at least get started over here and I think we'll probably spend a bit of time farming spruce leaves while we're there so we'll bring some saplings I'll bring a set of shears my plan for while we're over there is for the base out there to be relatively self-sustaining meaning I'll have to take the resources I want from here with me and then try and limit the amount of times I travel back home as much as possible so I think what we're going to do is bring a decent amount of iron we'll probably bring like a stack or two of iron blocks that way we can keep ourselves well in supply with iron if we want to. Of course, I'm going to make sure I take an ender chest with me so that we will have access to the inventory here because stuff like redstone components and ender pearls and fireworks and so forth are going to be pretty essential. I'll also remember to put my backup gear box <laughs> back in there so that we've got access to that if we need it. I have been trading so much glass from these librarians and with an update on the way that is potentially going to prevent us from trading with these guys constantly. It's only going to limit us once again to having two trades per day. I really need to stock up on glass while I can because I'm planning for the ski resort to be a contemporary style ski resort town so it's going to look a little bit more modern glass is going to be much more prominent there we're going to have a really nice cozy little town but for that we need windows so i'm going to grab as much glass as i can while i'm here and stick it all in the shulker box so that we can stock up on it for now okay i think i've got everything i want to bring with me got plenty of spruce some diorite stone glass scaffolding various other bits and pieces and all of these end crystals i've been making thanks to the gas tier farm and we still haven't made all of them because i ran out of blaze powder and i needed to grab a bit more glass and i was using glass for so much other stuff at the time but these of course are what I've been using to blast out a tunnel between the ski village and spawn so that we could build a piston bolt track that's going to take me back home if I need to come out this way. I might also make one in the nether because it's just faster, but yeah, I'm kind of considering continuing that project while we're over there, maybe doing something like that on streams. But for now, let's go on holiday. Let's go start this ski resort. We'll break ground on it today, maybe get an entrance or something like that built, and we'll get to work a lot with snow. Unfortunately, my boat path out to the ski resort has recently been destroyed slightly <laughs> from the fact that we were working on this area and destroying all of the terrain. Likewise there, there is a bit of a gap in it. And don't worry, I do have my armor on. That's just the armor HUD glitch that happens when you go through a nether portal. So yeah, we might need to change up the direction in which this travels or maybe just rebuild it once we finish taking down the rest of the terrain around there. But it's a little bit of a bumpy ride over this way right now. But once we reach the end of the line here, we find ourselves coming back through to the ski resorts. And it has been a while, but there is a house waiting for us. Who remembers this house? <laughs> we built this a little while ago, but it is nice and cozy. It has a lot of storage in the interior and I believe I even left a bunch of materials here. Yes, okay, we got like eight shulker boxes worth of stuff here. We've already got some snow primed and ready to go. Look at that, I even left some glass over here. Fantastic, we got plenty of building materials in here, of course. A nice diverse variety of stuff. Great, okay, this should be a nice way to start off our project here. I'm gonna fly up into the sky here and get a good look at our surroundings because this is a really quite massive ice plains biome. We have... A lot of mountainous terrain here already, but we are going to be modifying that quite heavily while we are here. And I really don't know how much I'm going to get done this month because terraforming on a scale that I want to terraform is such a lengthy and time-consuming process, but I think we will be able to get a fair amount of it done. We have a village over here, and I'm not sure quite how long they are going to last, considering we'll probably be spending a few days and nights here with zombies spawning in the distance, but we do have a couple of villagers still 
around here. We've got a farmer down there at least. And yeah, there's one or two. I think that one might be stuck over there in the pen with the cows. But he might be safer there than anywhere else, I think. And maybe we will end up populating the ski resort with villagers in the fullness of time. Maybe we could even bring some friendly pillagers over here like we did with Founders Forge. That'd be kind of fun if you can still do that when the next update drops. But yeah, we got plenty of space to work with here. Some icy rivers, some terrain that we can terraform. It's going to be a nice flat area and we'll probably get rid of some of the stuff that's floating in the sky like this because this is supposed to be a modern style ski resort so we kind of want it to be as realistic as is reasonably possible in Minecraft. But realism is one of the many reasons I love working with snow so much because you can do so much with snow simply by virtue of the fact that it can be layered up to seven times before it creates a full block and so with these we're able to create so much more subtle variations in the terrain than we can with any other type of block and I would absolutely love there to be some way of doing this with layers of sand as well I feel like deserts would be so much more realistic if you put sand dunes and stuff like that in with layers of sand the way you can layer snow but I really think this is going to be a great opportunity to work with some landscaping and some detail stuff and really build up snow drifts that can take us from area to area and and be piled up on the sides of paths and roads and stuff like that as a barrier for players to not be able to get past but still have something that looks a little bit realistic combine those with some of the stuff we have brought with us and this is really where diorite starts to shine as a building block which most people tend to shun because of its appearance i think a lot of people really don't like the look of diorite and don't find it easy to blend in with stuff but in snow biomes it really starts to work you can create a few different formations of diorite that allow it to look a little bit more like there is just slush piled up in this snow. It's the kind of stuff where like ice and dirt have combined and melted and refrozen and you end up with stuff that looks like this and really starts to blend in with the terrain in a way that the dirt I feel almost stands out in these snowy areas and so we're going to aim to make a lot of the terrain around here out of a combination of diorite and snow along with the usual stuff like grass here and there when we can but I think stuff like leaves as well are going to play an important role here and if we dig up some of the snow here we can start working with stuff like grass paths which in themselves already look like the kind of paths you get in a kind of muddy environment where there's all this snow and moisture around constantly so I think this is going to be a killer combination let's grow a few trees around here as well let's kind of start to shape a little arctic scene here and what I want to do for today's episode is create the entrance to our ski resort which despite the fact that the nether portal is over there and we have our little piston bolt railway down here under this hill I believe is where we left it yes we've got a stone staircase leading all the way down there to the piston bolt but you feel like the railway isn't going to drop you outside of town necessarily I feel like the way infrastructure works in the modern world is that the railways will drop you off in a fairly central location so I feel like keeping the railway here but putting the entrance to the town as though you had driven up to a front gate kind of thing like maybe over there somewhere and we can work on this entire area and landscape it without having to worry about everything being too close together we're going to work pretty heavily with a sense of scale in this area and I think some terraforming is going to really come into play here I also think for the first time in a while I'm actually going to up my render distance I've upped it to 20 chunks I might even try and push it to 24 if the system can withstand getting a little bit more render distance in here because I really feel like it's going to be advantageous to the look of this place to be able to see the terrain around us and it doesn't have to load in too much in the way of texture because so much of it is already covered in snow so hopefully it's not going to be too taxing on my computer and we'll be able to see a lot more of the terrain in the surrounding area and once we start building up these mountains to be even taller they're going to look all the more impressive for the fact that we can see them in the distance this is where we can also start to play with the optifine fog a little bit i've set it to 0.2 instead of 0.8 where i usually have it set just so there's a natural haze in the distance and once again that's going to add a little bit of atmosphere while still rendering in the blocks around here yeah it's worth playing with stuff like that if you want to create a little bit of atmosphere in your single player world look at that it's almost as though a blizzard is already happening and it's not even snowing but you can just kind of see the outline of blocks in the distance that's really going to create some atmosphere in your single player world if you want to use settings like that in optifine to enhance the experience 
I think what we're going to do is have the front gate of the ski resort kind of over here so that once you drive through, maybe you cross over this icy river. I want to keep the river as part of this area, I think. So we're going to cross over the river and hit the riverbank on the opposite side via some sort of bridge. And then from there, we will drive into the main town as though we're arriving on some sort of tour bus or something like that. I like that idea. So we're going to set up over here. I'm going to grab a bunch of these spruce logs. And I think the main thing to make right here is a large gateway, a sort of Jurassic Park style gateway almost, although that's totally not the theme we're going for here, but something that's just made of tall spruce trees on either side, connecting maybe a sign in the middle or something like that, and then we can do a little bit of landscaping around the outside. I think that's going to be a great way to start this area off. I think for the sake of realism, we're going to want this road to be about nine blocks wide, and then one block back from that, we're going to set up these two large sort of signposts that are going to be holding up the sign, welcoming people to the resort. Let's get this up here first. All right, stepping back here for a minute as the sun goes down. Yeah, that's not looking too bad. I think that's a decent sort of size. It looks a little bit large when you're up close, but once you step back and you get a sense of the scale, definitely. And oh, I love the way the town lies lights up at night around here that's going to be crucial to the vibe of this area as well if you want to have that kind of glowy ski resort town look to it you've got to have all of those glowing lights in the distance and we're going to try our best to keep some of that and not to too heavily mob proof this area even though lighting the area up is obviously one of the first things we want to do if we want to protect those villagers i think it's really nice to leave that sense of darkness i think maybe i want to add a block or two to the tops of these and then we can hang the sign on them a little bit lower let's go three blocks up here see if i can reach the other one nope didn't think i would <laughs> yeah so that right there is two stacks of spruce wood that's one stack per post really and i think they're about 16 blocks tall which makes a great deal of mathematical sense now let's outline the sign up here and i kind of want the sign to have a bit of a curve to it an upward curve and a slight outward curve as well so it's not just a completely flat square in there there we go how do we feel about that i think that's looking pretty good i think we've got a little bit of a curve there and we've got this sort of banner like feel to it which i'm i'm quite pleased with i think we could do a little bit to outline it maybe we could have a different wood type or maybe a log type around the outside just to give it a bit of a border and i want some lettering across the middle there and i've got that in mind i kind of just want to bring some quartz or something in so that we can have a nice white lettering over the top there something with stairs and slabs that we can build some kind of small letters with you know so yeah i think we're going to do that we're going to do it in 3d rather than doing it with banners because you can do banner lettering but it doesn't always look all that great so i might have to run through the nether or alternatively find some stonemasons whom i can trade with for quartz blocks so that we can add some lettering to the sign a little bit later but that's the general idea that's the sketch style of things for now we'll work on that a little bit more what i really want to do though now that we figured out that this is the scale we're working with is pile some stuff up around the bottom here and this is once again where that terraforming stuff comes in because we can have bits of stone and diorite and snow piled up around the outside of here remember these are going to be giant signposts almost made out of trees or put there manually they're going to be stuffed down into the rock a little bit and so yeah with a little bit of diorite and snow piled up around here some leaves coming off them maybe we can really make it look like they blend in not to mention that with this at being the entrance to the area the snow is going to be piled up on either side of the road because this pathway here this road is going to have to be cleared when there is fresh snowfall and all the snow piled up by the sides of the road to make sure that vehicles could still make their way through here right that's probably how this is going to work out so i think we're going to need to bring in a lot more blocks around the outsides here almost have it be like a valley that leads you into this sign and could potentially obscure your view of the surrounding area if you're entering it this way and then the entire landscape opens out in front of you once you pass through these gates i feel like it makes a really nice transitional point that way and we can kind of limit the player's perspective until they step through here and they see the landscape beyond so i'm going to get to work on this do a little bit more terraforming around here and you know what i think we could probably do that in the form of a time lapse
Hey folks, welcome back. I hope you enjoyed the time lapse. I'm so happy with this. This is a little bit of a taste of the kind of terraforming I want to do in this area. Just imagining this kind of wilderness out here and maybe have a road that kind of bends off towards that direction, mainly because that um, avoids crossing over any other rivers in the area. And what we've got here is a very simple mix, actually, when you look at it. It looks a little bit complicated to the casual observer but what we've got here really is just a bunch of natural stone cobblestone and cobblestone slabs mixed in a couple of natural stone slabs as well here and there just to give the terrain height a little bit of variety and then snow layers and spruce leaves and that's it we've used a bit of diorite as before to kind of build up those layers of slush at the side of the road those kind of like slushy piles of of snow that's melted and and you know refrozen overnight we've got a couple of little icy rivers pooling down here maybe with a bit of diorite underneath those as well and then this is just gray concrete powder and that's actually a really nice road surface i wanted to do some lines down the center of it or something like that but i don't know if i am going to do that now i think i'm probably just going to leave things as they are mainly because white lines would look too similar to the snow and yellow lines just seem to stand out a little bit too much when i tried it so some of you who've been watching the time lapse were probably wondering, what on earth does this mean? A snag. What is this over the top of the gateway? Well, this is a kind of a long story, and uh, it goes back to the fact that I have a Patreon account, which I advertise at the end of every video, but I don't really pay that much attention to it in the rest of the videos because you're here for a tutorial. But one of my patrons is the father of a kid who's been playing Minecraft. They've been playing Minecraft together. They've kind of been learning together. And this guy is a patron who's really kind of gone above and beyond in terms of supporting my channel and the stuff that I've been doing here on YouTube over the last little while and on Twitch as well. And he emailed me a while ago after he'd been a patron for a little while and said my son would love to see something in the world named after him or at least his online username which is snag s-n-a-h-g and we talked about it for a little while and i said well i'm building a ski resort soon and i got all of these ideas and you know obviously when it comes to doing stuff in this series a lot of the tutorials follow a certain progression but some of them are just kind of out of the blue and he said if you go back to making that ski resort at some point could you maybe name it after my son and he was like it's okay if you don't do that or you know just have a villager in town named after him or something but I feel like I can't preserve villagers all that well <laughs> sometimes especially in open areas like this so I thought yeah we'll name the ski resort after him this is the snag ski resort and um I don't really know it's it's not necessarily going to mean anything maybe you can kind of think of a clever acronym that'll be like ski and nature and alpine something or other. It, it doesn't really matter like what matters is that it's uh, it's kind of something that means something to this guy and his kid and they've been playing Minecraft together recently so I thought that was kind of cool just being able able to name something after him and yeah we're going to be passing through this gateway a little bit we're going to be doing some more terrain stuff around the outside here but the coolest part of it for me is when the sun goes down and things start to get a little bit dark i put a couple of torches behind there i might replace them with end rods later so we don't see any smoke particles from them or anything but it starts to get that cozy glow to it and the village in the distance starts glowing as well and I need to do some lighting up here and there, but it's difficult to light stuff up in this kind of project because we've got these snow layers everywhere and they melt when they get too close to a light source. So I thought, 
this is going to be a nice way of, you know, highlighting stuff like this where it's up high and it kind of draws the eye into it as the darkness draws in. And I like that a lot. I think that's looking really great and it's a really great start to our little alpine area. And I can hear zombies already, so I'm going to go and sleep. And this is what this road in looks like in the context of the surrounding area now. It doesn't look like all that much from the air, but on the ground... It really makes all the difference. I think this is going to be a super cool entrance and we'll build a bridge over the top here. And I think we'll have something that we haven't even considered building before in Minecraft. We're probably going to have some sort of car park over here that maybe like coaches and buses could come. We could take a look at building vehicles in Minecraft or at least like, you know, representations of vehicles. There's not exactly like you can build a car to drive it around, but we can go a little bit more contemporary with some of the stuff we're building here, which means we'll have some pretty cool stuff to do detailed tutorials on and do a little bit more building in the days and weeks to come. And don't worry, we are going to focus on bees when the the Busy Bees update drops in a few days. In fact, it's actually going to come out next Tuesday if things stay on schedule. So we are probably going to dip back to Founders Forge here and there to do some stuff like that, because that really feels more like a beekeeping town than out here in the Arctic wilderness, don't you think? But yes, we're going to be doing some cool stuff around here. We are going to be making some farms and maybe storage buildings and uh, like auto sorting storage and stuff over here as well. So we'll be able to uh, progress to some more advanced tutorials on that kind of thing but i hope you guys are enjoying the start of this new project area i'm really looking forward to building out this ski resort and i hope you guys are too if you enjoyed today's video don't forget to leave a like on it do subscribe if you want to see more and i'll see you guys soon take care bye for now